alien technology humanity has created, starting from fire, is a double-edged soul. So it can bring um, improvements to life and to work and to society, but it can bring the perils. And AI has the perils. You know, I wake up every day worry about the diversity inclusion issue in AI. We worry about fairness or, or the lack of fairness, privacy, um, the, 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 the labor market. So absolutely we need, to, uh, we need to be concerned. And because of that, we need to expand the study, the research, and the, the, the development of policies and the dialogue of AI beyond just the, 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 the codes and the products into these human realms, into these societal issues. So I absolutely agree with you on that, that this is the moment to open the dialogue, to open the research in those uh, issues. Obviously, um, there are enormously beneficial things that AI can do for us, especially when it is linked with, uh, with biology. Uh, we are about to get the best healthcare in the world, in, in, in history, and the cheapest, and available for billions of people via their smartphones, which today they have almost nothing. And this is why it is almost impossible to resist the temptation. And with all the, all the issues you know, of privacy, if you have a big battle between privacy and health, health is likely to win hands down. So I, I fully agree with that. And you know, my job as a historian, as a philosopher, as a social critic, is to point out the dangers in that. Because especially in Silicon Valley, people are very much familiar with the advantages, but they don't like to think so much about the dangers. Is there something endemic to humans that cannot be hacked? So when you asked me that question just two minutes ago, the first word that came to my mind is love. Is love hackable? Ask Tinder, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dating! That, 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 that's, that's, it depends. Dating on... is not the entirety of love, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> But if somebody comes along and tells me, well, you need to maximize human flourishing, or you need to maximize universal love, I, I don't know what it means. So, they, so the engineers go back to the philosophers and ask them, what do you actually mean? Which, you know, a lot of philosophical theories collapse around that because they can't really explain what... And we need this kind of co collaboration yep. in we need order an equation to move forward. For that. Wait, but then you've always... Fei-Fei, <laughs> is Fei-Fei right? If we can't explain and we can't code love, can artificial intelligence ever recreate it, or is it something intrinsic to humans that the machines will never emulate? I don't think that machines will feel love, but you don't necessarily need to feel it in order to be able to hack it, to monitor it, to predict it, to manipulate it. Part of the concern I have about today's AI is that super hyping um, of its capability. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's not a valid question, but I think that part of this conversation is built upon that assumption that this technology has become that powerful. And there's, I don't even know how many decades we are from that. Well, we opened a dialogue between a humanist and a technologist, and I want to see more of that. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Feifei. Thank you, Valno Harari. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you to the audience.